Hey Summoners, my name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for the patch 12.17 rundown. Today we're going to be covering the changes and also provide you guys with an updated tier list on all 5 roles to give you an idea of what's going to be good and what's not going to be so good in each role. Winning starts with drafting the right champions, and this video will give you an immediate advantage over the other players in solo queue. Make sure you subscribe because we always make meta videos like this just to ensure that you're always up to date on what's good, and you definitely don't want to miss out. Without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. Before we get into the actual balance changes, let's look at one thing that everybody can agree that Riot does well, the skins. This patch is introducing the Zenith game skin line. The champions getting skins for this are Blitzcrank, Lee Sin, and Jace. Unfortunately, while all the skins look pretty good, those last two champions are in a pretty awful spot right now, so I can't really be that excited for them. Viego is also getting a skin. The simply named King Viego gives us a look at Viego before he was such a bad guy. And I think it's been a pretty long time since Riot did one of their flashback style of skins, and I hope we see more like it. Now that we've covered the skins, let's talk about the upcoming system changes. The changes are pretty light this time around, with changes only aimed at stopwatch and the items it builds into. Stopwatch itself is having its cost increase from 650 to 750 gold. Seeker's Arm Guard is having its AP increase from 20 to 30. Both Zhonya's Hourglass and Guardian Angel are seeing a price increase but are getting some stat boosts to go along with that. Zhonya's cost is going up from 2600 to 3000, its AP is going up from 65 to 80, and its ability haze will be increasing from 10 to 15. Guardian's Angel cost is being increased from 2800 to 3000, with its buff bringing the AD up from 40 to 45. The cost increase on stopwatch makes sense. The stasis gives a ton of value, and often very easily pays for itself since it can make the tower dives doable, or just straight up win you a team fight. But I disagree pretty heavily with them buffing the stats on the item it builds into. I understand where they're coming from. Zhonya's and GA offer pretty bad stats compared to the other offensive option, but that's the thing. They're defensive items. They shouldn't offer stats that are comparable to the offensive items. Well, really, this is more pertains to Zhonya's. I actually think that Guardian Angel is pretty overrated. It has a 5 minute cooldown, and oftentimes, if you're getting a GA popped as a backline carry, the fight is probably lost anyway. But Zhonya's is already way, way too good as it is. The much shorter cooldown means that it's up almost every fight, and a stasis that you can choose to activate at any time is way better than an item that only activates when you die. Before we take a look at our updated tier list, let's go ahead and give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players that have spent years climbing the ladder, and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. So, if cramming in years of top tier gameplay into short hour long sessions to instantly get better at the game sounds good to you, you should really go pay them a visit. And they're available 24-7, so feel free to head over at any time. Okay, now let's actually get to the tier list. First, we'll start off with the top laners. Warwick moves up to the OP tier. He was once considered a pretty cheesy off-meta pick. You can run Barrier on him, bait into foes that don't really understand how he works, and then surprise him with his ability to turn around fights with his insane healing at low HP. But Warwick Top has been around for a long time now, and his win rate is still really high. At this point, people should understand how he works, at least to some extent, so you can't really keep calling him a cheesy pick. He's just straight up broken. Even if you understand how he works, that doesn't exactly give you a way to counter him. He wins virtually all matchups via sustain, be it a longer war of attrition or an all-in fight to the death. Olaf gets a slight demotion down to the S tier. As always, the demotion to the S tier doesn't really mean a ton. The champions in this tier list are really good options that you can often safely blind pick. It's just that they aren't quite as overbearing as the other OP tier options. But they're doing pretty decent recently and now getting buffs on this patch, we're moving Camille up to the A tier. With good enough mechanics, you could even consider her an S tier pick, but that's something that we'd probably say only applies in high elo tier lists, for players in Diamond Plus. Camille is already a pretty strong champion once you hit her 2 items, and very strong once you get 3 items. By buffing her shield, she'll have a better time trading in lane, which gives you a better chance of reaching those breakpoints. With Maokai getting a ton of changes this patch, we're not entirely sure where to place him. Giving him percent base damage on his primary trading tool sounds really good for him, but for now, we'll just be cautious and put him in the A tier. He could very easily go higher or lower depending on how he is at launch. As with any super tentative entry, check back with our mid-patch update next week. Cassiopeia moves up to the A tier. If you were just going by her win rate, there's an argument that she moves up to the S tier, but she's definitely a bit too matchup dependent to belong there. Set also gets bumped up to the A tier. The buffs that he's getting are pretty small, but for a scrappy champion like him, sometimes even a little nudge in this right direction can have huge effects, and he may even end up being an S tier. Yone is pretty weak as a top laner right now, so we're moving him down to the C tier. He's good if you somehow make it to the mid game without being too far behind, but with how ruffling against meta picks is, that's not really easy to do. Udyr isn't doing absolutely as awful as before, so we're promoting him, but only to the C tier. 
Our analysts basically say that you shouldn't really pick him, but you're not inting quite as hard as before if you do. Personally, I've seen some Udyrs pop off, but maybe that's just because I'm playing Spellbook only, which is by far the best game mode. Anyway, for the jungle, here's our list. The nerf that he's getting this patch will by no means gut Trundle. That being said, his W is what gives him so much individual solo carrying power. He'll still have a huge impact in the early game with his strong dueling, and he'll definitely be a strong teamfighter. For now, we think that he'll be scaled down enough that we're going to be moving him to the S tier. With Hakurum getting some pretty big changes, it's pretty hard to say where he'll land. In theory, these changes should push him a lot more towards his identity as a beefy but damage-focused bruiser that rampages through fights as a big threat, rather than as a tank that just does a ton of damage for no reason. For now, we'll put Hecarim in the A tier, but if he ends up being consistent enough, he could easily end up in the S or OP tier. He could also just hit the ground face first and still be bad. Check back in next week and see how things are looking. Nocturne's buffs this patch should give him much better time in the early clears, allowing him to more safely reach the part of the game where he's actually useful. This should be enough to make him at least a viable pick in most games, and a super strong one against the right comps. So, we're putting him in the A tier. We'll be moving Graves up to the B tier this patch. I'll always hold firm that he is one of the most overrated champions in the game. Even when he's super high pick rate, his win rate is rarely that high enough to justify it. People just like to AFK farm, and sometimes the hard carry playstyle that he comes with. Evelyn is also getting a promotion to the B tier. Unlike Graves who makes this tier just because he's mediocre, Eve is instead here because she's super situational. Against the wrong comp, you'll find it hard to do anything with her, but against the right one, she can solo carry games hard. After giving him a full patch to prove his worth, Udyr is still underperforming pretty badly, so we're moving him down to the C tier. There's still the possibility that people find a way to make him work, but for now, this is where he goes. Talia is doing pretty awful in the jungle, so we're moving her down to the D tier. There's never really a good time where she's a good pick, but there are plenty of other AP carries in higher tiers that does what she does, but better. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Cassidy moves up to the S tier. This is another tentative move. We could be overestimating his buff, but as we talked about plenty in the past, buffing the laning phase of any super hard scaling champion is usually a pretty bad idea. Allowing them to more consistently reach the point of the game where they can completely take over usually leads them to being pretty broken. Diana moves up to the S tier. She's still really strong, with high kill threat in lane and amazing damage in teamfights. While the vast majority of Morgana players like to play her like a support, they should really start abusing her mid lane. She's been performing well enough here that we're moving her up to the S tier. Her laning phase is super solid, with her W giving a way to neutralize pretty much any matchup since you instantly clear the waves, which is a little bit of AP and a few points in it. The extra income and XP from solo laning also means that she's a lot deadlier in teamfights in the mid and late game. A single QW combo can nearly one-shot squishy targets, and her ultimate actually hits like a truck. Brand is another support moving up to the S tier as a mid laner. His kick gives him hard pushing power while also doubling as a potent way to poke down your foe from across the wave, and his skirmishing and teamfighting is some of the best of any mage. Azir moves down to the D tier. Not much to say here, just the typical nerfing of a champion that's already doing pretty bad in solo queue, and this is due to his popularity at top levels of play. Anyway, let's move things down to the bot lane. With her nerf this patch, we think that Sivir might finally be hit hard enough to be demoted to the S tier. But even still, she's going to be probably stronger than most of the other options in this tier. After being really dominant earlier in the season, Lucian has finally fallen off pretty hard, so we're moving him down to the C tier. He's technically still a pretty good pick if you can still wall with him, but most of the meta picks are just way too good at neutralizing the early game. To finish things off, we have our supports. Soraka gets a demotion to the A tier. As with any enchanter, she's pretty much always going to be a good pick for coasting to a victory if you want to put in minimal effort, and instead rely on having a better team. But in close games, her impact isn't quite as high as the other higher tier picks when you're actually playing her to her full potential. Like in the top lane, we're entirely unsure where Maokai is going to end up as a support after his changes go live. Taking away percent damage from his saplings definitely can take away from his ability to poke and make the jungle a minefield, but maybe adding more damage to his direct trading will make him an even better kill lane support. For now, we're just going to have to put him in the beads here and revisit this one once we have some more to go off of. For Gragas, things have gone from bad to worse, and we're moving him down to the D tier. He doesn't really provide anything that makes him useful, either in or out of lane, that other champions don't do better. You want poke? Pick one of the mage supports. You want an all-in? Leona and the Mumu do it better. Disengage? Well, that's what Janna and Rel are for. He tries to do too much, but does none of it very well. Yumi's also having a really tough time lately, so we're knocking her down to the D tier as well. Even with the compensation buff that they gave her in patch 12.16 to give her some more poke with her Q, she just isn't really providing anything useful to the game, which personally, totally okay with. The thing is, Yumi's always going to be inherently impossible to balance. 
The only way I see Riot truly fixing her at this point is to give her a mid-scope update. Actually, I think they need to overhaul her enough so she could be basically a comprehensive champion update, just like they're doing with a Soul. Basically, a BGU without the visual part. Anyway, that concludes our 12.17 patch rundown. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. Also, make sure to join our Discord in the description box below. Thank you guys for watching, and as usual, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.